Well, gentlemen, I have been given to understand that there some sections of the Limitation Act are missing from the page. It is perhaps due to unforgetfulness of the boy operating it. And how we shall find time to discuss all these sections once again. But today I have given the task to explain the effect of acknowledgement in a given with reference to Limitation Act. Section 19 of the Limitation Act is a very important section and it prescribes the effect of acknowledgement on the question of limitation. So in order to appreciate the same, first of all we are to go through the section and thereafter I would like to explain as to what acknowledgement is and how it affects on the question of limitation. Where before the expiration of the period prescribed for a suit our application in respect of any property or right an acknowledgement of liability is in respect of such property or right has been made in writing signed by the party against whom such property or right is claimed or by some person through whom he derives title or liability. A fresh period of limitation shall be computed from the time when the acknowledgement was signed. Number two, where the writing containing the acknowledgement is undated. Oral evidence may be given of the time when it was signed but subject to the provisions of evidence Act 1872. Oral evidence of its contents shall not be received. Explanation 1 of section 19 says, for the purposes of this section, an acknowledgement may be sufficient. It omits to specify the exact nature of the property or right. However, the time for payment, delivery of performance or enjoyment has not yet come or is accompanied by a refusal to pay. Deliver perform or permit in enjoy or is coupled with a claim to a set off or is entrusted to a person other than the person entitled to the property right. Explanation 2. For the purpose of this section, signed means signed either personally or by an agent duly authorized in this behalf. Explanation 3. For the purpose of this section, an application for the execution of decree or order is an application in respect of a right. So the section 19 relates to the computation of limitation period where one acknowledges his liability in respect of property or right have been made in writing by the party against whom said right was claimed a fresh period of limitation would be computed from the time when the acknowledgement was so signed. So this is the basic principle which has been enunciated by the section. So in order to understand the acknowledgement, we are to see as to what are its dictionary meaning, 
and what is actually meant by acknowledgement and how far it is applicable in a case of limitation. So far as the ordinary dictionary meanings are concerned, this question was also decided in Doha 2004 by LR, page 690. I'm going to read this. To acknowledge is to admit, affirm, declare, testify, or own as chamber. According to Chambers English Dictionary, acknowledgement means recognition, admission, confession, thanks, and intimation of receipt. According to the concise Oxford Dictionary, acknowledgement means act of acknowledging thing given or done in return for service, message, etc author's statement of indebtedness to others. So these are the meanings given to acknowledgement in the ordinary parallels. But we are to go ahead to understand its meaning. These meanings related to the ordinary parallels and the dictionary meanings are usually part of general language. Part of general language means that they are ordinarily used in a particular manner, in particular meanings, for particular purposes. But it is stated by the jurists that words have no meanings. They are the words which are being used in language have no meanings at all. Suppose I say finger, it does not carry any meaning. I say nose, it has no meaning. I say table, it has no meaning. So similarly, all other words which are being used in language are having no meanings at all. So these words having no meanings, then what is to be imported from the words and what should be the concept of the words is very much material. The words have three folds. This is very important to understand the meaning of acknowledgement. What are these three folds are? Number one, the original concept of the word. Number two, depiction of particular aspects through a word. And number three is its hidden meanings. So whenever we find a word in a language, it has three angles and three dimensions and three concepts. Number one is the original concept which is ordinarily used in the language. Whenever a body talks about a word, it, this word carries certain picture in the mind of the listener. So the picture which is depicted in the mind gives some meanings to the word. So these are known as the original concept. Whenever a person makes a statement, the other person hears there too, he gets some picture from it. So other in other words, the words and the sentences are reflected in the mind of a man, so in their original concept. But sometimes there is depiction of particular aspects of a word, so it is very important that what is the seat of a word and under in what meaning that word is being used. So there are certain meanings of the words which are hidden therein. So every word has three types of concepts. When a language, language adopts a word as its part, it is vague, evagio in the society with its original concept. In the ordinary society, by the layman, the words has general meanings and those general meanings carry with them the original concept of the word. And thereafter, if we go ahead in a very technical 
and very scientific manner. We are to understand a language in its true import, in its true sentences, and in its true meanings. Sometimes a word of any other language is important. Then a difficulty arises. Sometimes a word, when imported from one language to the other, in this situation, it carries only one idea. Now it is to be explained that a word having several meanings in its own language, when imported from one language to the other language, it is not imported with all words. It is not imported with all meanings. It is not imported with all conceptions. But it is on, it is imported carrying only one meaning. And those meanings are used in a particular way. So whenever a word of one language is imported in the other language, it does not carry all its meanings, whether original or hidden, apparent or not. So it will carry only one meaning. So it shall be used in a particular and specific manner. So in this situation, a word has some hidden meanings as well. What are those meanings? There are certain meanings which are not supposed to be so, but whenever they are used in the language, they carry certain hidden meanings. On the face, it is used for one thing, but sometimes it is used for inner questions, for inner qualities, for inner purposes. Suppose, if I say, you are a thief. Thief is a person who has stolen a thing who has dishonestly deprived one person from a thing and carried it for his own use. And this is called, he is a thief. So if I say, you are a thief, it means that I am using this word in its ordinary meanings. But when I say, you are a thief, you have stolen my heart then the meaning of the word thief has changed. And so the meaning are changed with reference to the context. Now we are to consider this word in its particular reference. It is not reflecting a thief, but it is reflecting a man who loves you very much. Who has the courage to steal your heart. So when we say that you are a thief, you are stolen by heart, the meanings are altogether different. In the legal parallels, the word is to be understood with reference to the context. A word, if used in the ordinary language, may be given different meanings. But when it is being used in the language of the law, in the language of a jurist, in the language of the lawmaker, in the reference to the context, and signifying and magnificently giving the intention of the legislature, then it is to be used in that very sense in which that word is used. So for this purpose, when we are going to interpret a word, we are to see what its seat is. So in this situation, the seat of a word becomes very important. We are going to discuss the word acknowledgement with reference to the Imitation Act. In order to know its real sense, we are to understand the kinds of whole universe. Because we live in the universe. So the living universe is unlimited. And we are to gather all things which can be possibly gathered by the senses. So one word is to be used for one thing. Sometimes a substituted word is used for that. So when we are discussing all the things in the universe, we find a particular aspect of the word. So when 
being student of law, we are going to know the meaning of a particular word, especially when we are missing acknowledgement and its effect. We are to see that this word consists of things. And, uh, and the second word is the reflection of the universe. So at one and the same time, we are having two words. One word is the universe and the other word is the reflection of the universe. All reflections of the universe are not available to us. But we are able to gather the reflections through our senses. So there is a relation between the word, which are in the word, the words which are in this word, and the words which are reflected in our mind. So there is a relation between the two through five senses. So our five senses are meant to gather the material from the universe to the extent to which they are capable of doing it and then transmitting the same to our mind. But when we come to this matter, so we find a relation between the senses. When a matter relates to a thing which can be seen, it should be of the person who has the sense of seeing it. But when a matter relates to a thing which can be heard, it should be of the person who has heard it. But if it relates to a matter which can be perceived, it should be of the person who has perceived it. So the senses have a great relation with our mind and with the universe. The senses observe all the things from the universe and then transmit all the things in our mind. What happens in the mind? There is a hidden reality in every mind based upon the con his concept which was came into being on the basis of his childhood in the hands of mother, number two, education, in the school and college, number three, the atmosphere, and number four, his genetics. So all these four things affect his mind and create a hidden reality therein. But when, with the help of senses, we gather this reality out of the universe and transmit it to the mind, there it has, this reflection has to face the hidden reality. That hidden reality never allows anything against its concept. So if the outer world gives him effect and the hidden reality coincides with it, and when it coincides with it, then they are one and the same thing. So we can say that the mind has accepted what was in the outer world. If there was an agreement in the outer world and it is reflected in the brain by the senses, then the hidden reality, if accepts it, it shall mean that it has coincided with the outer world. Now the thing which was available in the outer world was transmitted in the, in the inner world and its reflection was in consonance with the outer one. So there are two aspects. One is to transmit the thing from the outer world to the inner world. And when the inner world accepts it, then it shall again reflect it to the outer world. So when after accepting it as a fact, or accepting it as a real reality, or accepting it as a phenomenal reality, are accepting it as a perceptive reality, it has the capability and authority to reflect it again out in the outer world. So for the purpose of giving it to the outer world, 
it has to use certain words. It has to use certain language. So when uh, the reflection of the outer world goes in the inner world, and there it finds place and acceptance before the hidden reality, then it is again rebounded in the outer world. So this rebound is in fact an acceptance of the person which was already available in the outer world. So whatsoever was in the outer world shall be deemed to have been acknowledged by him. So in this context, I would like to say that acknowledgement is the acceptance of those factors which were av available in the outside. And when they are accepted by the man in his inners, then he again reflects it in the outside. So that he can reflect it in the two ways. Number one, by the verbs, by his words of mouth in the language. And second, in writing. So when he is giving these words with his language, then it shall mean that he is transferring whatever he had accepted in his mind. So when he has this much in his mind, so this reaction is the real one. Now I am going to explain the acknowledgement with reference to the limitation act. When the observation and experience of the author of the other world or the outer world is accepted by the inner world, it may coincide with the hidden reality. And then when it is coinciding with the real hidden reality, it shall come out as an admitted fact, as a confessed fact, as an accepted fact, or as a genuine acceptance and declaration. Or in the other words, we can say that he is testifying whatsoever was in his mind. So this is an acknowledgement. Now this acknowledgement is coming out with the words of mouth. But the law does not recognize it because the words of the mouth vanish away in the atmosphere. At one time, a man says that I have accepted this situation. Then he forgets, or he wriggles it out, or backs it out. Then we don't have the way to understand what really was, what was meant by it. So the law says that the acknowledgement should be in writing. What does the writing mean? There are two kinds of writing. Number one is the use of the language. You write a thing in a particular language. That may be English, that may be Urdu, that may be any other language. But you will be writing in a particular language, depicting and reflecting whatsoever was in your mind, acknowledging those facts which were required to be admitted. And there is another soul there can be visible representations. You can acknowledge the things by signs and visible representations. And if visible representations are signs, amount to acknowledgement of a fact, reflecting the mind of the person who is coinciding with the facts and who is willing and ready to accept it then the signs and visible representations shall be deemed to be in the writing, so the acknowledgement shall be deemed to be in writing. After understanding as to what the acknowledgement is, we come to this conclusion that the acknowledgement is very much important. So when we are discussing section 9, where before the expiration of the period of limitation. So here the point is that what is the starting point and what is the ending point. In the ordinarily the schedule prescribes as to when the, limit, when the limitation starts and after calculating the period it ends. So while computing the period of limitation we have to see the starting point. 
the effect of acknowledgement in writing is that it changes the starting point. The starting point is altogether changed and so the date of starting point becomes the date when it is acknowledged. But the main thing is that the acknowledgement should be before expiring the period of limitation. So in order to understand the effect of the acknowledgement we are to see certain authorities. I'm going to quote. Those are Charles 2004 CLD, page 1552. Acknowledgement made after expiry of limitation. What is its effect? Facility granted to appellant in the year 1980, suit filed in 1992. Limitation for filing suit three years from the date it became due. Date from the payment of loan became due, not mentioned in plain, not an acronymous bar, held once the limitation had expired and no acknowledgement had been within the period of limitation, any acknowledgement made after the expiry of the limitation period would not extend the time. So the important point is that as the section itself says that acknowledgement should be within before the expiration of the period of limitation. So this question, what does it mean before the expiration of the period of limitation? And where are the circumstances? There are the circumstances when even after the period of limitation, it can be a good acknowledgement. We shall go through it when we shall be studying section 20. So what is the distinction between section 19 and 20 and how far they are, have the combined effect? It may be studied in, at a later stage. So up to this time today, we have to see that section 9 gives the effect of acknowledgement in writing. So the acknowledgement should be in writing. When it is in writing, it gives us a new starting point. And when it gives us a new starting point, then the limitation will start from that time when the writing of acknowledgement claim comes into existence. So I think we have covered a part of section 19 today and the rest of this section as required by gentlemen shall be gone through, explained, studied and discussed inshallah on the second occasion. Bundle of thanks.